Hello and welcome. This is Rufalmonger. And my friends, in today's video, we're going to be taking an ongoing look at several characters in Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate and the effect that customs have on them. And today we're talking about Scorpion and Sub Zero, fire and ice, as it were. So, for Sub Zero's case, it lets him just be a little bit more ignorant, a little bit more absurd, some of the stuff we're going to look at. And in Scorpion's case, it's downright potentially broken and buggy. So, hey, let's have a look at it. So, let's start with Scorpion first. And specifically, the moves we're going to be looking at today are Hell, Flame, and Demon Breath. Now, he's got a lot of really good moves. Like, uh, you know, Hellport Cancel is amazing. If you're looking for a lot of damage, you can't go wrong with, like, Burning Spear and all the Death Spin stuff. You can get some really absurd damage that way, honestly, right? But what Hellflame and Demon Breath are going to be offering us is utility in Hellflame and just some broken garbage in Demon Breath. So let's cover that first. So before we get to the ridiculousness of the Demon Breath, let's just talk the humble Hellflame. Now Hellflame, I know, is not exactly a move people they were excited for, right? No one was really excited for Hellflame when custom variations are coming up. And I'm not going to tell you it's going to revolutionize the world here, but what I'm going to tell you this is it plugs a pretty big hole in his game plan. Because when Scorpion is this far away, what respect do you have to show Scorpion? Zero. You know, teleport's a high, spear's a high, right? That's it. And a lot of times if you get the spear off, if they're shooting any kind of projectile, well then you're just going to trade and it's not going to trade in your favor. Because none of the damage happens till the second hit, or the EX if you're going for the EX, right? And if they have a kind of zoning that's non-standard, like say Corpse Drop or like Cetrion Gera stuff, you literally can't react and teleport to that. You just kind of have to guess, and a Scorpion rando guessing is exactly what people are waiting for, and then waiting for that full punish, right? So, eh, you know, maybe not playing into their hands, right? You don't want to do that. But Hellflame, it's a mid projectile that's aimable. So close, medium, and far, right? And it's not quite full screen, but it's very close to it. And yeah, it's a mid. So a mid, you obviously cannot duck it, right? So just a simple fact of the matter is, it plugs a hole in his game plan. It makes him a threat beyond just your average footsie distance. And, uh, you know, just waiting for someone to screw up. And most people, they're very sick of Scorpion, right? They're not going to fall for the usual shenanigans. And this is something that says, no, you actually got to play the game and worry about me. And once people wake up a little bit and realize this is something they have to realize, then they're more inclined to engage at a range. And which point, then, you know, teleports, trying to catch people with spears, all that kind of stuff. Those become a lot more valuable because they can't literally neutral duck all your offense and you're literally powerless to stop it. So, while once again, of a lot of the moves we cover in a lot of these videos, I'm not gonna say this is crazy, but it works, man. It, it's, a, it's a workhorse, it does its stuff. You know, a lot of people, honestly, a lot of characters would kill for a mid fireball. Like, a lot of people gotta burn a bar to get a mid or a low out of a projectile. Scorpion, he can just get one for free. So, honestly, it's even a little bit privileged in a way, so just don't sleep on it. And just for a little bit more utility before we go on Demon Breath here, the uh, flame is enhanceable and it launches people on the enhance, meaning you can get combos and all that kind of stuff from it, right? And uh, also some stuff in the corner as well. So just it just works, right? Like I don't want to oversell it here because it's not the be all end all, but just it's downright solid. So now let's talk the Demon Breath. So, before we get to the really greasy stuff here, in and of itself, it's fairly inoffensive, right? You know, you can end a lot of combos with it. You can burn a bar, get some more damage, all that kind of stuff. But the thing is this, it allows for an otherwise not really allowed mechanic in this game, in that it can guarantee a throw. A throw that is inescapable, other than the option to tech, that is still there. But you're not allowed to duck, and you're not allowed to jump out. You just have to take the throw. This is something that normally does not happen in this game. So I have Devora set here. Devora is literally ducking. And anytime she's allowed to return the duck, she will do so on the first possible frame. So I threw her. 
even though she was set to duck the whole time. In fact, I'll switch to Devora myself and I'll try to get out of the setup. Okay, now I'm Devora. You see my inputs here on the right. And all I'm going to do right now is just try to hold up and just jump out of a throw. Okay, so now I'm got the hit. Now I'm holding up. First possible frame jump out. Oh, I still got grabbed. So it didn't matter if I was holding up. Doesn't matter if I'm holding down the whole time. Now I'm holding down here. No matter what's going to happen here, I'm going to get thrown. It's inescapable. I am allowed to tech it. That is an option available to me. I am allowed to tech it. But if you get demon breath in the corner, the throw, left or right, whatever you choose, is inescapable and guaranteed. And that's something that's not normally allowed in the game. Uh, like someone who was uh, more comparable to that is Robocop with a flamethrower and command grab. And that's straight up not allowed. That's a banned combination, right? Now, granted, it's a command grab, so you know you can't tech it. But the same idea of inescapable throw normally is not allowed. And yet here we are, we get a guaranteed throw setup. And while you're allowed the tech, it's a true coin flip because you don't know which way they're going to throw you. And yes, ideally, throwing you into the corner is more advantageous, sure. So smart money's on that break. But Scorpion is also a character that gets crushing blows if you screw up your throw tech, right? So he gets richly rewarded for this even beyond the basic throw setup. If it was just the 130 damage, still very strong, don't get me wrong, right? But it'd be a little more reasonable, except he's going to be lined up, and the next throw now, it might be the game. Due to the fact he just got this setup on you, and now the next one is loaded up with a lot of extra damage. And now this interaction you're about to see here, let alone this whole throw thing in the corner, I'm 99% sure cannot be intended. So this was pointed out to me by one ladybug on Twitter. So if you manage to trade, so the enemy hits you while you're doing the fire breath, right? Oh, did you see that? That says uh, combo. So for whatever reason, like say a uh, EX Spear or something, the breath on trade puts them into a combo okay state and you can get a full conversion from this. So yeah, um... That's pretty good. Now, I'm not going to necessarily say go around fishing for trades all day long because it might not work out in your favor. As a uh, point blank, it can be punishable here. Uh, so watch out for that. But if you know they're like the mashing kind here, like they're going to mash directly after they block a poke, then you can do this situation and literally get a full combo. So I don't know how long this one is for the world. I'm not sure if this is intentional. But uh, as it stands, hey, if you're going to use it, now is the time. Now, moving on from the insanity and possibly broken abilities of Scorpion, let's talk Sub-Zero. So Sub-Zero, what I have to show you today is not a variation that's going to blow your mind, right? Old ground ice, hey, got banned. <laughs> so I guess we don't get to show that one off. Uh, but we're going to be looking at Polar Axe, Rising Ice, and Creeping Ice. So two of these three you probably are pretty familiar with here. Creeping Ice, one of the superstars of Variation 3. And the Polar Axe, the best part of Variation 2, I mean by a lot. If you picked Variation 2 at all, this was the reason you picked it. And Rising Ice before was never allowed in a competitive variation, so let's go over those. So first, let's talk Creeping Ice and why you would be picking it. Because honestly, it's uh, one of the more brain dead things and easy auto includes now that we have custom variations because it makes 4-2 safe. It's really as simple as that, right? 4-2, very strong, on the edge of reactability, and for most people, just not reactable, honestly, to be fully real, uh, as it is an overhead starter, meaning you have to stand block versus crouch block. And normally, you know, in and of itself, uh, a lot of the options are unsafe, right? Like, you know, 4-2-4, four, four, all that kind of stuff. Or if you want to go 4-2 slide, also unsafe. And this just says, no. You're totally safe. Now, the price to pay for that safety is you don't do as much damage. Like, you know, this is a little under 9% versus, you know, potentially a big score, uh, depending if you had a crushing blow or not for something like a slide. But safety is paramount for a lot of things, especially when you're doing something normally unsafe. And of course, if you're willing to burn a bar, you can basically push back and just totally reset the neutral. So 
it's just really good all around. Don't really need to go too much more than that. Sub-Zero has a lot of low and overhead options and just mix-up potential. And this just makes the other half of the coin safe, like the low. Now, Polar Axe. This move is, frankly, ridiculous. So this is an air okay projectile, and there are several air okay projectiles in the game. That in itself is not really you know, unique. But what's pretty unique about it is it does 8%. Uh, so other comparable things like Shao Kahn or Cabal, those do 6%. So this move is just straight up more damaging. And also has a lot more range than those moves. And also, on top of that, it's also a lot more safe. Like, I can do this from here? That's zero on block! Zero on block! Oh, negative three, that's far away, who cares? Nobody. I don't. In fact, I'm a little bit happy, if anything. Because I know that means I can just do this all day long, right? And unlike many other air okay moves, if you diagonal jump, it removes the height requirement. So you can just do these bad boys, like, literally right off the ground. So, this is a way to engage with the enemy, you know, way further than your back one, right? So you can just kind of toss these out and just be very belligerent. And, like, that one was plus on block, right? And, of course, you know, plus or negative from this far away, unless the numbers are very big, it's not a big deal. But still, you are very safe even if you do it from, like, what you would think would be an unwise range. This is still completely safe. So, yeah, this move is crazy. And, of course, if you're getting that height, the screen control is very, very big. It literally can be something as basic as this. Am I going to jump kick you? Or am I going to jump an axe and your uppercut or whatever anti-air you had with, and you took an axe to the head, right? It's just amazing for space control, and most of the cast would kill to have an option like this. So before it was stuck in a fairly dead variation, but now, hey, you can just pick it, and it just makes Sub-Zero's neutral so much stronger. And now let's talk Rising Ice. So Rising Ice gives Sub-Zero a lot more combo potential. And Sub-Zero is certainly a character, he had combos, right? Like, it's not like he couldn't do combos before, but how about if we just got a lot more damage and a lot more corner carry for our efforts? So let me show you a mid-screen B&B combo, and I'm not even sure if this is optimal, it's just what I got. And I'm pretty impressed with the results. So 31% and very reasonable corner carry. So that kind of damage is it's certainly not amazing, amazing. But over 30% mid-screen, very reasonable, very fair. Especially with the corner carry. And now let's look how crazy this stuff gets in the corner. So I'm sure you're very aware of like Sub-Zero corner combos like this. You know, get that crushing blow and you get like 35 to near 40%, right? Not bad. And with uh, Rising Ice, you can get comparable damage and not even use the Crushing Blow. So you may recall, if you use back 3-2 in the corner, it actually causes a little bit of a launch state. Uh, just due to the fact, like, the move just launches them up a bit, so you can just kind of go from there. And we're going to use this concept in our combo. Also, by the way, you are air okay after Rising Ice. Just you can't really do much up with it outside the corner, but here you can. And now, putting it all together. And all of a sudden, 38%. 38% for a bar is good by any character standards. That is well and above average. And hey, we still have that crushing blow. We can still add that on top. Oh, and with the Crushing Blow, it's 45, basically, right? So with so many hits, it doesn't scale as great. But if you're just looking for that little bit of extra edge, then you can easily get it. The damage potential with Rising Ice is through the roof. And when we just put it all together, your greasy, gimmicky stuff with your overheads just gets safer. Your mid-screen and neutral just gets a lot more advantageous and strong, thanks to the axe and just everything you can do with it. And your overall combo damage just goes up thanks to Rising Ice. So basically for Sub-Zero, 
What's not to love? And with everything covered in this video, Scorpion and Sub-Zero just two more characters that just wildly benefit, right? And of course, once again, that's really the story of Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate. So many characters just get wild. Sub-Zero gets to be more annoying, more damaging, and just better at what he does. And Scorpion, he gets some more stuff that just helps him be more fundamentally sound than he currently is. And maybe some borderline broken busted stuff. With all that said, my friends, if there's some other characters you'd like to see showcased, please let me know in the comments below, or if you got some good ideas yourself and just something you want to discuss. And otherwise, that is the end of this video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video's found you well. Go out and play some Mortal Kombat. Yeah.